Hey friends, this is Shrifa. We often have brilliant ideas and then we forget them. We are always getting good advices, reading new things, discovering new ideas. But it is hard to keep track of all of these and even harder to use them to create something. Having a second brain solves these issues for me and in this video, I will tell you how to build a second brain for yourself to remember stuffs that you learn to create more stuffs that you can later share. Our brain is for having ideas, not storing them. Building a second brain is a methodology proposed by Tiago Forte. Definitely check the superhuman out. It's a system for saving and systematically reminding us of the ideas, inspirations, insights, and connections we have gained through our experience. Today, we manage many different kinds of information, emails, text messages, articles, books, podcasts, webinars, and many others. Yet, without a little extra care to preserve these valuable resources, our precious knowledge remains siloed and scattered across dozens of different locations. By offloading our thinking into a second brain, we free our biological brain to imagine, create, and simply be present. There is a three-part approach to building a second brain. Remember, create, and connect. Part one, remember. The first step in building a second brain is capturing the ideas and insights you think that are worth saving. We are already consuming or producing information. We just need to keep it in a single centralized place. With a digital note-taking app like Notion, Evernote, Microsoft OneNote, Beer, or anything else. These apps facilitate capturing small snippets of text and can also store hyperlinks, images, web pages, screenshots, PDFs, and all kinds of things all of which are saved permanently and synced across all your devices. Think like a curator. We need to make conscious, strategic decisions about what we consume. Otherwise, we'll be left with an abundance of content that will never be of any use. Organize your content by project. Instead of organizing files primarily by topic, which is time-consuming and mentally taxing, Organize them according to the projects you are actively working on. Keep only what resonates. Save anything that resonates with you on an intuitive level. Part 2. Connect. Once you start collecting valuable knowledge in a centralized place, you will naturally start to notice patterns and connections. Design notes for your future self. Every time we create a note or make an edit, we can make it just a little easier to find and make use of next time. This can include Defining key terms in parentheses in case we forget what they mean. Inserting placeholders when we leave off summarizing a source so we know where to pick back up. Adding links to related websites, files or emails that we are likely to forget over time. Summarize progressively at different levels of details. Progressive summarization allows you to read the note in different ways for different purposes. In depth, if you want to glean in every detail or at a high level if you just need the main takeaway. Organize opportunistically, a little bit at a time. Instead of investing a lot of effort upfront, organize your note opportunistically in small bits over time. Add value to a note every time you touch it. Ensure that the most frequently used and thus most valuable notes surface organically. Part 3. Create All of this capturing, summarizing, connecting and organizing has one ultimate purpose creating tangible results in the real world. With a substantial reserve of supporting material in your second brain, you never need to start from scratch. All creativity stands on the shoulder of giants. Silvano Arieti said, Creative products are always shiny and new, but the creative process is ancient and unchanging. Don't just consume information passively, put it to use. Information only becomes knowledge when we put it to use. Creating things is not only deeply fulfilling, it can also bring us unexpected opportunities, introduce us to new friends or collaborators, and have a positive impact on others by inspiring them, entertaining them, or informing them. Create smaller, reusable units of work. Instead of trying to sit down and move the entire project forward all at once, which is like trying to roll a giant boulder uphill, a more effective approach is to end each work session, whether it is a 15-minute or 3-hour work session, by completing just one intermediate packet. That way, the next time you come back to it, 
you don't have to start from a blank page. Share your work with the world. It can be tempting to wait until everything is ready, until you have all the information you think you need. But as you continually curate and save pieces of content, review and summarize them in your second brain, you will start to realize that there is no such thing as a finished product. As you can see, building a second brain is an integrated set of behaviors for turning incoming information into completed creative projects. There are many benefits of building a second brain. Less stress, better focus, more insights, and enhanced productivity. As your second brain gains momentum over weeks and months, you will start to feel and become different. Over time, you will start to recognize that everything you are learning or experiencing makes sense because you know how to capture and make use of anything. Every experience you have becomes an opportunity to learn and to grow. This frees you to imagine and you can be in the moment. By leveraging the power of technology rather than fighting it, we can supercharge our creativity and leverage our ideas to transform our career, business and life. I have built my life around Notion and I treat it as my second brain. But the app doesn't matter as long as you have a digital archive that works for you. Hope this idea of having a second brain will help you create awesome stuff. If this was helpful, please drop a like to help me with the YouTube algorithm. Do subscribe for more contents like this one. Thanks a lot if you're watching till the end. See you later.